ladies and gentlemen, I'm DDK, and this is CT Spotlights 4, and I have a double here. One episode, two players, it's a new concept I want to try out, and I've just taken the most interesting rounds from both players from the same game against Dignitas in the Mixed Challenge. So let's see how it goes. Let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoy. Alrighty then, so we're starting with Exist for the first half and he's going to be the man who is watching Arch. And so we are in the pistol round to begin with, I'm going to see him poking out for a little bit of information quickly before falling back. One, thick, uh, one quick thing to note is that when you're playing CT on the A side you always have to be on the same kind of level as your teammates to make sure that you always have the kind of same level of cover. So you can see he's holding this angle. And he's got a bit of a crossfire going on with his mate on quad. We can see the terrorists are moving through apartments. So Exist is going to realize this. His mates have spotted it. They've heard the sound cues. And it's going to be a really nice angle for him to try to attack from. Just has to hit the shots from this point. So it's a really simple pistol round from NIP. And it's just very execution based. You know, Can they hit the shots? They, they've given themselves something simple to do. And yeah, it seems as if they can. Exist having a bit of trouble. But anyway, into another round we have... A nice display of an anti-eco here from NIP. And it exists. Again, he's the Archman. He does go for the quick peek. Of course, because he is the fastest from that angle. So he can get the information. And he is the fastest guy to do that. So you can see, though, my point demonstrated here is we have a bit of a speed up. He gets on the same level as his teammates playing really, really far back. Check out this position with the FAMAS. And that is that can't be more optimal. That's really, really well played by Exist there, taking that position. And his entire team also did that, you know, spread along a pit and graveyard. So it's really, really nice setup there for the anti-eco once they established that it was going to be an A push, not taking any risks at all. Again, getting smoked off an arch, always a very stressful situation. And he's actually, in fact, there's three Famuses on the t side of uh, NIP here. So that's really scary against the AK by of Team Dignitas. So they've got to be really careful here. Just speeding up so you can see uh, how things are progressing a little bit more quickly here and just holding the angle and this this is always risky because they can just do the quick peek and try to play for that one shot but exist obviously getting a call from his mates at banana to throw over a smoke to keep uh, the delay working over at the banana and falling back after that smoke to arch this is a really nice position to cover from you can see again he's playing on the same level if you want to call it that as his, as his mates as soon as they fell back into the site he had to fall back as well because he wouldn't have quick um, or uh, rather his teammates wouldn't have a quick answer for if exist went down they wouldn't be able to make a trade and that is one of the biggest concepts in this game is the ability to create trades and especially as a CT side so again simple stuff but it's, it's the golden stuff, the stuff that works time and again. And here we're seeing, of course, a bit of action over on Banana on the minimap to which Freiburg will respond in a frag. So that's going to queue it exists to kind of be floating around here. He's not 100% sure if it is a committed situation for Team Dignitas. And this is often the position. But he is sure that he can play a little bit closer towards CT spawn because of the traffic that's been spotted over at Banana. So it's, it is all about information. This position is so, so, so much based on the information that you get. And of course he's got his two mates over at Quad and they're playing one Quad and one on the on top of the little truck there. So they can hear apartments, they know exactly what's going on and that's going to allow Exist to be informed whether he can get attacked from Bedroom. Unfortunately you can't always get that first kill when they peek out and Exist was going for the challenge and you do, you do have to go for those challenges sometimes and it was unlucky for him there even though he knew it was coming he wasn't able to actually get the, the headshot that he needed to take the players down so that you know that happens to even the best players so again a bit of a speed up as we see this next round and it just I mean it's always a waiting game wait to see what the terrorists are gonna do and then react and this is what is happening right now for exist who is making his way forwards back over towards the B bomb site as they did get the information and it's pretty standard and here's just going to be a double mortal setup so that's what they're going to be working with and you can see the molotovs going over here this is a really nice little position here and uh, of course he's got the cover from his mate over more towards the fountain and they might not be expecting his position here it's a bit of a surprise position and he's going to have the flashes ready to support his teammate that's his first priority get the nathan whilst his teammate freiberg does the fragging 
So with this support position with the grenades, with the Molotov and the flash, the Tees will be running blind into an Inferno on Inferno. So here we go, we'll be making the frags and playing that really well, that team play with his teammate Freiberg there, so really, really good stuff. And now we switch over to Get Right for the first pistol again, for the CT side, if that makes sense. But uh, either way, Get Right is going to be looking to the right here. Look at that, the smoke goes down, but he knows that the most likely position for a terrorist to appear first is actually over, like, for them to jump over the cart, because te the terrorists need to jump over that position to see if that if there's anyone there, and that's the first priority when you're pushing into that area. And that's something Get Right knows. So we just speed up here as we see Get Right pushing on through and uh, helping with the cleanup. And this this uh, Zipnik seemed a bit a bit tough to take down there, but either way, now we see Get Right, who is primarily kind of more of a, a floater on the B side. That's kind of what he, the role he's been playing this game. He's ready with the grenade. This is so so cool because what it means is that he can actually stay on the A side and he can help delay. So what is happening is Freiburg's taking a peek to see if there's anyone there. If there's someone there. Get right throws the nade and then goes to B. If there's no one there, he's got a really, really fast support time on A. So that's such a nice thing that you can mix into your CT play if you're the floater on the B side. If you have a strong player like Freiburg, who really, really can control B very well by himself, like Freiburg, Neo, those kinds of players, then you can do moves like that quite often, in fact, and it can be very successful. And you can note get right here at three boxes looking for the log spot which is very common on the banana push and this could be even be quite an easy frag as you don't expect someone when you're boosting up to that spot to be aiming there directly so now he's in the position at B once again defensive and this is going to be a pretty nice situation that you know they don't have to worry about anything we move into the next round so here we go a bit of an aggressive push with a pre-nade and a flash to allow him to be aggressive if he wants to or to stop any pushing and of course there goes the smoke down we see him looking again behind that car in the same spot because again the terrorist will jump over there first that's that's most often going to be the first move but the flash comes in and here goes the reaction pedaling back getting the smoke down spraying his way back into safety whilst Freiburg helps him out and actually if you if you go back and watch that his uh, Get right, his, his teammates were actually over pushing second mid and they saw that there was no one there and that's why the response was really fast from NIP there. So that's really, really nice. And into the next round we go and again it's, uh, and they're both playing pretty close here. You know, Ney goes over, there's no peak to go with that flash. So can't really read into it too much what the use of that flash would be considering how delayed it was. But this position here is really, really nice this double setup is not so commonly used at all and surprises like this can work really really well and kind of just intermittent flashing here from get right and if someone was if he was to catch someone with that flash just as they're peeking they are basically just dead because Freiburg's on the angle so that's definitely the most useful part of that grenade it's a bit of a bit of luck factor going into it but nevertheless there's a lot of luck involved in the game get right now you know it, this just really illustrated that sometimes you just don't know and you can see him going back and forth back and forth from A to B from A to B until eventually he comes back over to B when they truly know and um, of course because he's get right he just kills everyone but I just wanted to, to use that moment to illustrate somehow that you know even the top top players don't always know exactly where, where to be and they have to deal with situations that are less than optimal trying to go for that retake of running and moving and shooting rather than just having good positions to defend with so now we have the nice little setup from Get Right and Freiburg with Get Right actually going really close here for an aggressive peek. This is probably unexpected and indeed, you know, Freiburg's going to flash over, he's going to pop flash Get Right to give Get Right a free frag. You can argue that Get Right got greedy when instead he should have just backed away, been happy with the first frag that he got, but instead he wanted to re-peek for another one and that was uh, the mistake that got him killed there. But would it? Would you call it a mistake if he got a frag? I, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? And that's the thing with a lot of top players too, and the argument or debate that can rage on for all of time, as, you know, players like that can really make a top player a top player, doing things like that consistently and consistently getting away with it. But here you go again, get right, floating on back, reading the map well, able to take out a couple players with, again, you want you want to rewind that moment because his, his, his aim is just, and his spray is just, it is just sublime. Either way, moving around to library side, you can see the setup he has with his team, two teammates on the site. He gets easy support, and you know that's all she wrote. So there you go, very, very quick 
quick episode. I hope you guys liked that one. Please let me know what you think about this two-man format, and I hope that I could provide some level of insights that will help you in your game, or maybe you just enjoyed listening to. Either way, see you next time.